The Biden administration is in chaos. Several unmitigated disasters have been emerging for some time now. We've got the economic crisis, inflation, gas prices, a labor shortage. Word now the food cost is going to be permanent and Biden is going to have to increase food stamps to make up for it. We've got the border crisis. Leaked audio shows that the Biden administration feels they're going to lose control of an unsustainable border crisis. Kamala Harris was refusing to go down for months, only recently saying, "Okay, finally, I'll go down. And now we have Afghanistan. Images emerging from Kabul's airport are horrifying. And there's more video surfacing now of the Taliban overrunning the airport as American forces flee in utter desperation. Now, many people want to blame Trump for that, but I think you look to the other crises that we have been facing as, as a nation, and I think it's fair to say it is the fault of Joe Biden. The buck stops with him. He's the commander in chief. He's the leader. And right now, as, Afga- as Afghanistan falls, as Kabul falls, where is the administration? Jen Psaki on holiday. Joe Biden on holiday at Camp David, though, to be fair, he is going to address the nation. Now, for those of you watching this, I recorded it uh, sometime before Biden uh, did begin his speech, but he is going to come out of holiday and address the nation, which he should have done over the weekend. He should have done immediately. But my friends, we have this audio I want to lead with. And we'll talk all about all of these crises and what's happening. I want to talk to you about how the media tries to cover this up and what's happening with this administration. Joe Biden's approval rating has taken a hit to record lows, but the media still defends the man. I think this audio leak on the border crisis shows just how bad things really are. The media has been trying to claim that, oh, it's not a crisis on the border and it's not that big of a deal, or they try to blame Trump. But I have to say that it's remarkable, in my opinion, that all of this starts unfolding with ever increasing rapidity under the Joe Biden administration, a man who is canceling press events, who is on holiday when we are facing this major crisis. And while I think it's fair to criticize Trump for a lot of things, I think it's unfair to say that what's happening in Afghanistan or the economy or the border are the fault of Trump. Under Trump, the economy was booming pre-COVID. I understand that. And I'm not going to say that Joe Biden is responsible for what what, what, what the pandemic is doing. Under Trump, the economy was doing really well. Under Trump, the border was getting under control. And now we have a judge issuing a ruling that the remain in Mexico policy must be reinstated. Joe Biden's changes have caused these problems. It's a hard topic. People who don't like Trump will never accept that that it's Biden who did this. Many of them voted for Biden and they don't want to be responsible. They just want to point the finger to the past administration and say, oh, it's all it's all this guy. Trump's the one who negotiated the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Trump was presiding over the pandemic in the first place. Trump's the one who made inhumane policies and forced our hand. None of which is true, except for the fact that Trump did negotiate this withdrawal. But Trump's withdrawal was not supposed to be this way, the way Joe Biden did it. Joe Biden delayed it by over three months. The withdrawal was supposed to be in May, giving the Taliban more time to plan, time that they, the Biden administration, clearly did not use to plan themselves. They had more than enough time to figure this out. And not to mention, Joe Biden could have simply said, no, we're going to stay. You can't do anything about it. Now, I will give him that respect. I think leaving Afghanistan is the right move. It's a shame that it's going down this way. But let's be real. It is the Biden administration that has dropped the ball across the board. And I want to get started with this story from TimCast.com about these audio leaks, which kind of back this up. It's a very different world, isn't it? Behind the scenes, what they're saying, their private position versus their public position. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to articles just like this. And if you're a member, you'll get an advertisement-free experience as well as access to the TimCast IRL members-only podcast episodes that go up Monday through Thursday. And you're just helping support our journalism, our writing, and the expansion of, of the projects we have. We have several shows coming out. Of course, all of these shows will be available to all members for the same amazing price. We'll see how long I can keep that up until we get strained, but I think, I think we can make this work with your support. But don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, if it matters, I guess, and share the show with your friend, uh, with friends and family. Put it on social media. Click that share button. Let me read and, and, we'll, and we'll start breaking down everything that's happening in this country. And I think it needs to be said. Audio leaks of Biden border chief admitting 
we're going to lose control of unsustainable border crisis. Secretly recorded audio of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas private, uh, meeting privately with U.S. Border Patrol agents in Texas on Thursday has been leaked online. In the audio, Mayorkas can be heard saying that the border crisis is unsustainable and that we're going to lose control of the situation if borders are the first line of defense for America. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey called on Mayorkas to step down hours after the recording went public. A couple of days ago, I was down in Mexico and I said, look, you know, if 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 our borders are the first line of defense, we're going to lose. And this is unsustainable, he says. We can't continue like this. Our people in the field can't continue and our system isn't built for it. It's amazing. Ducey said, the safety of Arizona and our entire nation depends on Mallorca stepping down. We can't have a defeatist fighting for our nation's border security. It's time for Secretary Mayorkas to resign, and he needs to be replaced with someone who will tell the truth publicly and stand up to the radical activists inside the Biden administration, the Biden-Harris administration, Ducey said. Trump slammed the Biden admin over the border crisis in a statement published on Friday morning. Tragic mess in Afghanistan, a completely open and broken border, crime at record levels, oil prices through the roof, inflation rising, and taken advantage of by the entire world. Do you miss me yet? Trump wrote, my friends, there are a lot of things I don't miss about Donald Trump. And uh, it's a tough point to make. But is that really the game we're playing? Trump is the big ask. Look, between Hillary and Trump, I didn't vote. In 2020, between Biden and Trump, I said, "Okay, I'll take Trump. And I think I was right. Now, if I had a choice, I wouldn't choose either. I like what Trump proposed in terms of his second term agenda. School choice is big. I think it's very important, especially right now. Getting the troops out of of Afghanistan, I think that was very important. But 2019 was a massive boom year for so many people. The economy was roaring. Granted, the debt was roaring as well. Trump is far from perfect. I look at someone right now like DeSantis, who has a lot of the similar policies that I think a lot of Trump supporters would get behind, and he's not the bombastic, brash personality and, you know, uh, ill, uh, aggressive temper, we'll call it that, that Trump has. I do think there are benefits to having someone like Trump, but do we miss him yet? I hate to say it, but compared to Joe Biden, I think the reason why I voted for Trump is obvious at this point. The, the crises we are facing, Trump lays it all out. Afghanistan, chaos. The border, chaos, crime at record levels. It's it's true. Oil prices through the roof, inflation. It's now going to be permanent. They were they were telling us all the time. Don't worry. It's temporary. They lied. The media lied. Inflation will be temporary because the economy is booming. No, it isn't. People are quitting their jobs. We added a million new jobs to the economy, but we added a million new job openings, apparently, because people are quitting their jobs. It's manipulation, man. It feels like a controlled demolition and being in take, taken advantage of the entire world. The New York Post reports that Mayorkas also received at the meeting that more than 212,000 illegal immigrants had been stopped by border agents last month alone. The 212,672 stops in July, which is a 20 year high, represented a 12.6% increase over June when 188,934 stops were reported. According to figures released by the Border Patrol, the report continues. Border Patrol has already stopped over 1.1 million illegal border crossing attempts this year. And how many people weren't stopped at all? Now, there is a development. And I'm showing you this because it backs up. This is Biden's fault. Judge orders Biden to re-implement Trump's remain in Mexico policy. On Friday, a federal judge ordered the Biden administration to re-implement former President Trump's remain in Mexico policy, which required migrants who attempted to illegally illegally cross the southern border to stay in Mexico as they wait for the case to be adjudicated. Judge Matthew J. Kaxmark, I can't pronounce it, sorry, ruled the Biden administration must enforce and implement, implement migrant protection protocols, also known as remain in Mexico, in good faith until such time as it has been lawfully rescinded in compliance with the Administrative Procedure Act. This was Joe Biden. My friends, right now, we are dealing with a major crisis in Afghanistan. We are dealing with an economic crisis. Inflation is going to be permanent, as I stated. And I pull up for you, my friends, a simple Google search. Biden approval rating. That's it. I'm not trying to do any bias searches like people hate Biden or Biden rating tanks. Okay. I mean, I know what I say based on what I search for, but this is what I search for. We get three articles displayed by Google. 
538. Uh, interesting. What's behind Biden's declining approval rating? We get Newsweek. Joe Biden approval rating hits record low amid Afghanistan crisis. And I love this one from Bloomberg. Biden's approval rating takes its first lil dip. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what it says. Biden's approval rating takes its first little dip. Is this a joke? How about Newsweek record low? I suppose the challenge is people will look at that and assume it's in the absolute gutter, but it is below 50%, depending on which pollster you're looking at. I bring you now to Mr. Greg Price on Twitter, and he has this tweet only seven months in, and um, it's fascinating. Here's an image. Taliban leadership inside Afghan presidential palace in Kabul with dozens of armed fighters live. This is from Al Jazeera. The next photo from Pew Research. Migrant encounters at U.S.-Mexico border are a 21 year high. CBS News, U.S. gas prices highest in seven years, up 40 percent since January. Inflation is the highest it's been in nearly 13 years. That is something else. Now, I can tell you a million times the administration's in chaos, but don't take it from me. Well, actually, yeah, take it from me because I tweeted this out, but it's a, it's a trend on Twitter. 25th Amendment is trending at number 13 in the U.S. And here's the image, politics, 13, trending with 24,500 tweets. That's not millions. I mean, we're not talking about uh, 70 million people here saying 25th Amendment. You don't have that many people using Twitter who are, you know, the small percentage of the population uses Twitter. The 25th Amendment is the call to have uh, uh, Joe Biden removed from office. I guess we would then get Kamala Harris. Can I tell you how what's happening with Afghanistan manifests in something truly disastrous for this country? This is a tweet from the Global Times. Chinese state affiliated media, basically the mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist Party. They said, from what happened in Afghanistan, those in Taiwan should perceive that once war breaks out in the Straits, the island's defense will collapse in hours and U.S. military won't come to help. As a result, the DPP will quickly surrender. This is amazing. In this image, they say once a cross straits war breaks out, while the mainland seizes the island with forces, the U.S. would have to would have to have a much greater determination than it had for Afghanistan, Syria and Vietnam if it wants to interfere. They are looking at what's happening in Afghanistan, saying this is proof the United States has no has, has no strength. I think that's true. I think it's absolutely true. I think what we're seeing in Afghanistan should send shock uh, shockwaves um, to people in this country. We should not have been there. We should have left immediately. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't have gone. We shouldn't have stayed. And we should leave now. And I have to be fair. Biden does deserve credit for saying we're going to at least follow through with the withdrawal because I'm, I want it to happen. Personally, I don't see why we are trying to build another nation. Look at some of these videos. I posted a video of a U.S. soldier trying to teach the Afghan security forces to do jumping jacks, and they can't. I am not exaggerating. They can't do jumping jacks. These people were not prepared and not capable for whatever reason. They were farmers. And there's a man and he's just jumping and, 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 and you see the exasperation of the U.S. soldier. Why did we remain? No, we should leave. The problem is when you see this video of the Taliban storming the, the, the airport and gunshots ringing out and you see the helicopter and the U.S. military forces fleeing in desperation and panic. Why did that happen? It's because Joe Biden has done a few things. One, he pushed past the deadline for Afghanistan for by, by three months, giving them more time to prepare. Clearly, he did not prepare. And the Taliban threatened, if you do this, we will retaliate. And they are. Joe Biden also, he's AWOL on these crises. He can't stop the border crisis. He can't stop the economic crisis. It's all piling up and everyone can see it. And that sends a message to the people of the world. It sends a message to the Taliban. This now's our chance. The, the, the great giant is asleep at the wheel. This is what you get when you vote against an administration. And now, with an already massive border crisis, we get stories like these from Business Insider. After 20 years of destruction, the U.S. has a moral obligation to let in one million Afghan refugees. How are we going to do that? 
We going to let in uh, the, a million people? How do we track for that? How do we how do we track for people who are Taliban sympathizers or just the, the general vetting process? No, 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 don't get me wrong. I think we should let in interpreters and contractors, people in Afghanistan, Af- 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 Afghanis who assisted the U.S., I believe must be evacuated and given refugee status. But is that a million? Insider reports. 20 years of war, of U.S. war in Afghanistan, it resulted in hundreds of thousands of Afghan deaths and a displacement of 5.9 million people. The U.S. government and U.S. citizens have a responsibility to repair the damage caused by our war. The U.S. must resettle at least 1 million Afghan refugees in the U.S. over the next decade and provide additional humanitarian assistance to Afghans. David Vine is a professor of anthropology, and he makes that argument. I don't think we have the capability to do this. And this is this is the extreme position we find ourselves in. And again, I blame Joe Biden. Now, look, these things do not happen in a vacuum. OK, Trump is responsible for some some of what we see in the world with global politics and everything like that. It is true that Donald Trump is the one who set the deadline and said we're leaving Afghanistan. I think it's fair to point out. I believe the Taliban still would have seized Afghanistan very quickly, but it would be very different. OK, the, the speed at which the Afghani government collapsed and government officials fled and Afghani security forces fled in helicopters and they're flying to other countries. One got shot down, apparently. I think it was in Uzbekistan. That shows that even if it was Trump, things would have been bad. The difference? Two, two things. One, Trump was a bombastic, ill-tempered kind of man, okay? Do you think he's the kind of guy who's going to sit there and be like, what are they doing? Mm-mm. No. A lot of people are posting they thought Trump would start bombing the, the, the tarmac when the Taliban ran in, and I'm like, I kind of think so. Look what he did with, Sulem- with Suleimani, okay? I, 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 it's horrifying to think, but it's war. I mean, the Taliban, these people are in combat and trying to storm an airport as we're evacuating. That's not that's not cool. If the Taliban stood back, there could be a clean evacuation. But no, 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 no. They want this. The Taliban wants everyone to see America running in fear. Do you think Trump would allow the Taliban to make the U.S. look like it's running in fear? No way. Trump would drop bombs. I'm not saying it's a good thing. It's certainly better than civilians and, and, and military personnel and contractors being killed. I think Trump would have just it, Trump would have lit up. But check this out. I want to show you this video of what's happening right now in this country. We have a video. Mike Cernovich tweeted about it. In the video, you can see a reporter. I believe it's uh, Clarissa Ward. Is that is that who it is? I, I believe it is. Uh, yes, Clarissa Ward. She's wearing uh, the burqa. She's wearing the um, the appropriate attire for the region that the Taliban is in control. Women have to wear uh, these things. And she says that they're chanting death to America, but also quite friendly. It's a bit bizarre. Now, this video has gone viral. I definitely think she, you know, you know what makes me laugh about this video is the, the uh, oblivious nature of, of what this reporter is saying. However, I do think it's very good that we have a reporter on the ground. I think it's incredibly brave of Clarissa Ward to be there. Look, she's a woman and the Taliban are not going to respect women in this regard. You can even see the men looking at her and kind of laughing. And she's wearing these clothes reporting for CNN. I want the imagery. I want the video. I want to know what's going on. But there is some criticism. Now, Mike Cernovich said the Taliban allows CNN as this is immense propaganda value for them, shows them in victory. Even Western women must wear hijab in Afghanistan now. This isn't reporting. It's doing the enemy's bidding. I disagree. It is reporting. But it's a bit naive reporting. You see, the reason they're being friendly, the Taliban is allowing, the reason they've run in, the reason they're allowing this this reporter is because they want people to see them chasing America, having them run scared. It's not that they're being friendly. It's that they're tolerating you for now because they want everyone to see how powerful they are. And you're doing that for them. However, I'm still glad that they got the footage. 100%. I'm glad to see the the imagery of the Taliban chanting these things. We want to know who these people are. We want to know what's going on. And we need more information to better assess assess these circumstances. To be fair, however, we have this article from Hot Air. Now, Hot Air is is, is a a right-leaning opinion site. It's my my understanding. And they said she's not defending them. Okay? I still think she gave a poor choice of words. 
They say, is that what she's really doing? Cheerleading for the Taliban? She isn't. For one thing, no one who'd make a wardrobe adjustment as drastic as this in 24 hours is confused with the nature of the new regime. And you can see on August 15th, Clarissa Ward was wearing normal clothes. On the 16th, she's in a burqa. As an American and a woman, she is an obvious target. The hijab is a small way to mitigate the threat of violence to her and her crew, and it was the right move. I, I do not think she's trying to apologize. I think she should, maybe she, she shouldn't have said it at all. Maybe they should have filmed it and she could have reported after the fact. I don't think she needed to be down there for this. The camera person could do it. And then she could report back later what she saw because you need to say these people are not friendly. They are chanting death to America. They want this imagery to get out. They want people to see them as strong. It is a disaster. And it's not just uh, it's not just Afghanistan. I know it's, it's big in the news. I know this is the big story. So we're definitely going to talk about it because this is a defining moment for the administration of Joe Biden. It's almost like people are going to see everything that happened. And, and we all predicted this, right? People will vote for Joe Biden because they're voting against a president. They're voting to elect against a president. It's not, it's not that they're voting against Trump. They're literally voting against a president. Normally, when it's like, who do you have to choose from? You've got re Democrat, Republican. Over the past few elections, it's like, well, look, George Bush is really, really bad. And so I'll take this guy who's actually not that bad. It used to be the lesser of two evils, right? The idea was with, uh, you know, Al Gore and George W. Bush, it was like, well, Bush is really awful and Al Gore is pretty good. So let's do that with Joe Biden. It was Trump is awful and Biden is not Trump. They weren't even saying Biden was going to do anything for us. They were like, at least it's not Trump. A lot of people, at least in the past, were like, yeah, I wish we get someone better than Gore or Kerry. People loved Obama, to be honest. With 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 Donald Trump and Joe Biden, nobody was coming out. OK, I mean, it's hypothetical, right? For the most part, people weren't coming out saying, yay, Biden. In fact, Biden's enthusiasm was like 26 percent. It was like record low. What people didn't consider is that Joe Biden, uh, that Donald Trump's uh, um, unfavorability was also extremely high. And the favorability, uh, the enthusiasm for voting against Trump was also really high, like 80 percent. So as much as they love to come after me for saying, you know, the hypothetical 49 state landslide, uh, what I also added was that you need to consider these people, a lot of these conservatives aren't considering the fact that enthusiasm, enthusiasm against Trump was extremely high. Well, now what may happen is people are going to see the other utter chaos of this presidential administration, and it could result in people just saying enough. We will take Trump, please. I wouldn't be surprised. This is going to get worse. We've been saying it's going to get worse. And I don't want to I don't want to say it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but I don't have any swing in the Biden administration. I don't talk to any of these people. We're watching what they do and we're seeing how bad it gets. Take a look at this from The New York Post in June. Kamala Harris doesn't actually visit border, says nothing of its substance, leaves. It was all theater. She was refusing to go to the border. Everyone kept saying, are you going to go? Are you going to go? Are you going to go? The crisis is getting out of hand. Take a look how Texas Tribune reports the same day in her first trip to the U.S.-Mexico border as vice president. Kamala Harris focuses on causes of immigration. I pull up these two stories to contrast how the media portrays things. For the longest time, she was refusing to go. OK, at the very least, she went down to El Paso. However, Republicans continue to attack her for not going to the Rio Grande Valley, where a large number of border apprehensions are happening. So she went down. She didn't go to the hot spot. And I think she should have. And while I think we're going to play this, we're going to play this straight. We're going to say this very simply. Kamala Harris went to the border. But she didn't go to the hotspot. She should have. Deserves some criticism. I'm not going to pretend she didn't go to the border. I'm just going to say they don't take this seriously. And now for one of the most horrifying, like I shouldn't say horrifying, but devastating things here for the regular working class American. If you voted for this man, if you voted for this. Biden administration prompts largest permanent increase in food stamps because inflation is so incredibly high. It is falling down around us. I see it. I went to the grocery store. We were doing, a, you know, we're filming for the vlog. We have a lot of employees here. We have a couple dozen. So we're buying groceries and I'm just looking at the prices and I'm laughing. We went to buy cat food. I got three cases of cat food. OK, I'm talking like not big boxes. I'm talking. They're like, I think it's let's 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 see. It's like 24 cans. So I think we got like uh, like 36 cans. It was almost two hundred dollars. I'm not exaggerating. 
it was like, I think they were, they were like, four, it was like uh, one pack was 40 bucks. So it was like 130. Okay. Exaggerating. It came out to like 140 something dollars altogether for these three things of, of, of cat food that'll probably last us a month. Last time we went and bought a bunch of cat food, it was like 60 bucks because the prices are going up. There's meat shortages. People, they, they were telling me at the pet store, like, oh yeah, it's getting, it's getting expensive. I was like, really? We go grocery shopping. Things are getting expensive, man. Gas is going up. It's causing everything to go up. The Biden administration is paying, is, 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 is trying to extend, is extending all of these, these, this free money stuff. Eviction moratoriums means people can ride out what they owe on eviction and then not pay. And then they can just abruptly leave the last minute once the moratorium ends. They're not spending money on rent. Some are. A lot of people are paying rent. A lot of people are honorable. They have scruples. But there's a lot of people who are like, if you can't kick me out, I'll save the money. And then just by the time they can file for eviction, I'll go get a new place. And then I'll have all the money in my pocket. How about that? And get this. Landlords can't take security deposits towards back rent. So they'll have to give that back. It's free money plus the unemployment benefits. So there's a labor shortage. The New York Times reports the jump in benefits, the biggest in the program's history, comes after a revision of the initiative's nutrition standards that supporters say will reduce hunger and better reflect how Americans eat. Okay, the New York Times isn't necessarily saying it's inflation. They're saying it's about nutrition. More free money. Do you understand? I want people to have better nutrition. I really, really do. Uh, I've recently taken that a bit more serious. I was talking to, you know, Ian about this. You guys know Ian from the Tim Kessler podcast. He was like, you're looking good, man. And, uh, it's, you know, since, since I'm like, since last week, he's like, yeah, I, was, well, I cut all the bread out. Seriously. I was like, you know, I, I don't eat that much bread. And I was thinking it was fine, breaded stuff. And then I was just like, you know what, man, I'm just not going to eat it. And I just dropped eating it. I feel great. Cutting down the sugar substantially feel great. I want everyone to eat better. But how do you just do that? Giving more money to people doesn't do that. But here we go again. If somebody, look, I, I have received food stamps in my life. I've been unemployed in my life. And I have talked to people about it. I've gone to food banks when I was younger. And I see a lot of these people with these food cards. They would go in and you can buy candy bars. You can buy junk food all day and night. They'll give you the money to buy food, but they won't tell you what you have to buy. And you can't buy hot food with it, which I, I got to be honest, would probably be better than just giving someone a blanket card for a supermarket. Michael Bloomberg's solution in his mind was to tax the poor, he said, because he thought that, uh, you know, Bloomberg was saying poor people don't have, and this is Bloomberg saying this, the knowledge. Yeah, that they don't have the ability. So he wanted to tax them so they could he could buy things for them. I, I say things that way to prevent out of context clips. If you, if you get the idea, of course, people still do it. I love it when there's a clip of me that pops up and it's like, I think that uh, and people believe that's real. It's really, really amazing stuff. But here we are. Many people are saying the reason that Biden is increasing the cost of food is because inflation has gone up to such a degree. I've talked to people who receive benefits in, in the past few months, and they tell me they're worried because things are getting too expensive and their benefits are getting cut. Now, food benefits are getting increased. What do you think happens when Joe Biden keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing? Free money, more money, inflation, inflation, inflation. And then it gets worse. Isn't it interesting how we predicted this was going to happen? It seemed obvious to me. If people get free money and don't have to work, they won't work. If you give people, people money to cover um, as much of their bills as, as, as it doesn't even matter, actually. If you give someone a dollar for free, they'll take, it, they'll, they'll take it and they'll buy something with it. If you give them $10, they'll take it. They'll buy something with it. If you keep giving someone $300 and everyone keeps just getting this money, eventually that $300 becomes worth almost nothing because everybody's got the money to spend. No one's producing anything. And then with inflation, people eventually just say, awesome, three buck, 300 bucks. Wow. I can get a candy bar for that. It's still a free candy bar. I'll take it. This is another program where Joe Biden is giving out more money. Under the new rules announced Monday, will put in place in October, uh, put in place in October, uh, and put in place in October, average benefits will rise more than 25% from pandemic levels. All 42 million people in the program will receive additional aid. The move does not require congressional approval. I like the idea of helping people. But I also don't like the idea of creating dependency on government, which is what's happening. Programs from the government would be better suited, not just giving out free money, but giving out abilities, teaching people to fish instead of giving them fish.
But I think they understand this. It's funny. People like to post that meme where it's a sign and it says, please do not feed the wild animals because they will become dependent on humans. And then they show the government saying, you know, welfare programs or whatever. I think they misunderstand. They think these 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 uh, Democrat government individuals are morons who don't understand. No, they do. They're creating a dependent voter base. They're doing it very, very heavily with every day. They give out free money and extended benefits. Come 2022, what's going to happen? Republicans have already tried to take the benefits away. And you're going to have a bunch of people saying, if I don't have these benefits, I'm in trouble. The Republicans will then be forced to say, "Okay, we won't do it. And we drift ever so slowly, actually, ever so gradually. And then suddenly into some kind of authoritarianism. It's not communism. No, see, the people on the right call it communism. It's not. The people on the left call it capitalism. We've always been. That's just wrong, too. It's fascism. I mean, it's just fas- It's the lucrative merger of corporation and state. There's revolving door policies between the highest levels of government and industry. And this is what they do. I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. I absolutely want to give him credit for following through on the withdrawal from Afghanistan. And as much as he screwed this up, he didn't think it was going to happen. You know, so I'm not going to say he's he's jumping on the grenade or anything. I'm, I'm glad he followed through. And now he looks like a, like an idiot, but he did the right thing. He just did it extremely poorly. I'm worried that people are going to say, look at this botched uh, exodus as a justification for more forever wars and regime change wars. When I wish we would just focus on ourselves. We are a stagnating culture. We have serious problems within our own country and we're so We've been for so long obsessed with foreign policy stuff. I'd love to just see America care about America, not be the world police and all that stuff. But it seems like that's what's still going to happen. So let's just let me just say as much as these images are bad, as much as we can absolutely say Biden botched this one. Let's give him some credit for withdrawing from Afghanistan. Because I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see it happen. I hope everyone stays as safe as possible. And I feel for the people of Afghanistan who are worried about what the Taliban will do. But all of these young men fleeing the country, if there's one thing the U.S. screwed up, it didn't teach these people to stand up for what they believed in. And that's a problem we have here at home, too. I'll leave it there. Stand up now or forever hold your peace. We need to be peaceful, persuasive. We need to be resourceful. We need to prove come 2022 that there is an alternative. And I I would love to see at least one or two libertarians win some congressional seats, create some pushback for the unit party. How do we do that? I don't know. Mises caucus, maybe. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.